This Sunday marks the 20th anniversary of the Nisqually earthquake. The magnitude 6.8 quake lasted nearly a minute and caused nearly $4 billion in damage. And all this week, King 5 is bringing a special series of reports, taking a look back at what happened and what to prepare for going forward. As King 5's Glenn Farley shows us why there will be another one. This is the Nisqually River Delta near Olympia. Earthquakes have names, and the Nisqually earthquake, a strong magnitude 6.8, on February 28, 2001, takes its name from here. If you didn't know there was a quake here, you wouldn't find any evidence that it even existed. Unlike the San Andreas Fault in California, there are no lines, no cracks, no weird shifts in the road. The fault was deep underground. How deep? 35 miles underground. And when that fault ruptured, it sent its energy up and out. There are three types of earthquakes Washington faces tying directly to the collision between crustal plates, where the ocean floor, known as the Juan de Fuca plate, is slowly being pushed under North America and down into the hot mantle of the Earth. Just off the coast is where the great earthquakes happened, hundreds of years apart, the magnitude nines. Very deep, some 60 miles down, we have those silent earthquakes that last for weeks and even months. As scientists say the leading edge of the plate becomes like taffy or hot plastic, slowly stretching every 14 months or so. They are so slow, they don't cause any damage. But it's this area in the middle, at the bend, the so-named Benioff zone, where we get our most frequent damaging quakes. This is the zone where Nisqually came from. When that ground shakes and you start losing your footing, it is a really disorienting, frightening feeling. Bill Steele is a seismologist with the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network at the University of Washington. He remembers that day like yesterday. He was getting a cup of coffee when the shelves started shaking. I just watched all of the lamp posts bouncing all the way back to the university, kind of running through my mind, where is this earthquake, how big is it, and all the questions that I had before I could get to the lab and find out. Since Nisqually is near Olympia, it's not a surprise that Olympia was hit hard. But in Seattle, much farther away, there is major damage, including what's called liquefaction, where the ground shakes so hard, moist sandy soil under places including Boeing Field lose their ability to hold up runways and buildings, turning, like the word says, into a liquid consistency. But Tacoma, no liquefaction, little damage, even though it was closer to the epicenter. Tacoma was kind of in a shadow where it didn't get the strongest intensity shaking. That was kind of thrown toward Olympia and, and north uh, up to, toward Seattle. It is this patchwork of severe damage here, nothing over there, that also revealed how different soils and rocks can lead to different levels of damage. Scientists now know that because they set out a new generation of seismometers not long before the Nisqually quake struck, capable of recording strong shaking, giving scientists a new tool to help analyze what happened. To get a pretty good picture of how the ground shook during the earthquake. But Nisqually wasn't unexpected. Two other quakes, a magnitude 6.5 in 1965 and a magnitude 7.1 in 1949, even bigger than Nisqually, all from that bending slab of ocean floor miles under our feet. Imagine just a block of wood, you know, a, a two by four, and I start bending it. Okay, maybe I'm very strong and I can actually bend that thing. And you start hearing popping and cracking in it because of the bend, right? Harold Tobin is our state seismologist. The 1949 quake killed eight people. 1965 blamed for seven deaths. And scientists know another one is coming. An 84% chance of another quake like these, 50 years since Nisqually. And 20 of those years have already passed. But does that mean the odds go up over the next 30? Tobin says it's not quite that simple. We don't have that level of precision on those kind of numbers. I can't say because one more year has passed that it's incremented up to 86% or something like that. Let's just call it more likely than not. All three of those quakes were relatively close together. 1949, even nearer to Olympia. 1965, further north and Federal Way. Yet the Benioff zone runs from Northern California into British Columbia, creating more opportunities for more earthquakes like Nisqually. In Seattle, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. 
And by the way, we have extensive resources on preparing for an earthquake as well of, as what you need to know about the great shakeout. It's happening this Thursday. Just text the word quake to 206-448-4545. We will send you a link with more details.